Okay, welcome back again to Sanford Flip Math. This is an entirely new video since I cut the other one off. Uh, we're working from Calculus by uh, Finney Demana Waits Kennedy. And uh, this problem is page from, uh, from page 252, number 20. And it is about a triangular prism being used as a tank. And it, the water is filling up. And the ends of this triangular prism are isosceles trapezoids. Isosceles triangular prism. If I say the word trapezoid at any point during the rest of this problem, I meant triangle. All right, yeah. Well, that was, that was for those watching at home. All right, too much competition, folks. Thank you. All right, so the basic formula for volume of any kind of a prism uh, where we're talking about, uh, you know, things are, you know, it's got to be a prism, so the bases have to be the same. We're, we're very used to seeing this kind of a prism, and the volume for that is length times width times height. Well, that length times width part of that is really just the area of the base. So, like this shape. If I do length times width for this base and then times the height, that is the volume of that prism. Okay, similarly, uh, if I'm talking about a triangular prism, then we're, we're talking about something that looks like this. And if we were going to find the volume of that, it, it would be the area of the triangle, the area of the base, times the height. So the kind of the basic format uh, for the, the volume of any kind of a shape where the top and bottom are identical shapes, like this, uh, is area of the base. So in this case, this base is going to be the triangle. And then, now, it, here's where the tricky part gets, it, where the tricky part comes in. The triangle's going to have its own height. Right, so the volume of all of this blue stuff, this water, this whatever this is filling up with, uh, the water, the volume of that blue stuff is really about One half base times height, but this is the height of the triangle, times the height of this prism, but the prism's height is really the distance between the bases. It's really this length, so in here it's that 15. Is that changing? No. So the length of this trough is not changing. I can drop that in as a number right now. Don't confuse it with the H for the triangle. We're going to put the number in now so I don't confuse them. It's like L. Okay? Yes? Oh, this thing. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Since I'm not using it, I can do that. Yep. All right. Let me uh, get this out of the way. Okay, so again, that's the basic format. Okay, so now what we need to do is get a relationship between the base and the height, and, and this is, this is kind of like what we did with the cone before. Okay? I know that the, the base of the big triangle, okay, in, in other words, if I was talking about the, the entire tank, this is four across, and this height is three. So I'm going to call this the base, I'm going to call this the height. So the ratio base to height would be 4 to 3, and since this is straight, I can just look at it as proportional. And, and again, the idea is, you know, if the water level's here, okay, so the base won't be 4 anymore, but it'll be in the same ratio, base to height, 4 to 3. Okay, so if this was 2, this would be 1 and a half, or something like that. Okay, so I'm going to use that then to work my equation down to a single variable on the, on the right side, so a single independent variable. Okay, so I want H to be in it. So I don't want B to be in it, so I want to replace the B. So I'm going to multiply both sides by H. So I have B equals 4 thirds times H. So this is now going to be volume equals 1 half. Instead of B, I'm going to write 4 thirds H times H times 15. Okay, so... So that 4 thirds H is the base, 
This H is the H. That 15 is the length of this trough, the height of the prism. Okay, and then we're just going to clean this up. Okay. Well, again, the ratio of base to height is 4 thirds H. So I solved this for B. I solved it for B so I could replace the B. Yeah, in just a second. All right, so again, this base is not the base of the entire tank. This is the, ba this is the base of the triangle of the water or whatever that liquid is. Okay, not the entire tank because, remember, the volume of water that we have is not the entire tank unless it's full. All right, so cleanup crew. V equals, well, I know that uh, I can divide out a 2 here, and I can divide out a 3 here. So this is just 10H squared, is that right? That just looks too easy now. Three, the 3 divided out with the 15. And the 4 and the 2 divided, I think that's it. Okay, so, so now that I have this, I can do the derivative. Hmm? What, what? Okay, so at this point, we can actually do a derivative now. So dv dt equals 20h dh dt. They tell us dv dt, it is a positive 2.5. We want to know dh dt when the overall height of the water is what? Do they tell us? when it's two feet deep. That was from the original problem. Okay, so 2.5 equals 40 dH dt. Divide by 40. So obviously the work in this problem was setting up the equation to take the derivative of. Okay, so 2.5 divided by 40. I'm sorry? 0 0.0625, and this is in feet per minute. Does it make sense that it's positive? Were we putting water in or taking water out? Putting water in. Okay. Uh, because the final answer here is how is the height changing with respect to time? Cubic would be volume. So if we were looking for dv dt, then we would be doing cubic something per whatever. All right, and we're just going to leave this example as it is. Uh, again, we were looking for dh dt, and it is here. And that is it. Again, positive makes sense because we were putting water in, so the height ought to be going up. Thanks for watching. Bye.